what's going on everybody welcome back to another video you know I've been struggling to you know figure out if it was worth making a video about the last three days or so with all the talk surrounding the Winnipeg Jets big three players that are likely not going to be Winnipeg Jets come next season right you know Connor Hellebuck Mark Shifley Pierre-Luc Dubois we know what's going on there we know they're on the block and we know that teams are interested and uh, we know for sure that Pierre-Luc Dubois more than likely will not be a Winnipeg Jet come next season. And this is something we've known for a while. It wasn't really news. I made a little video, just speculation video on Pierre-Luc Dubois uh, earlier last week. And I'm here again, uh, really just going to be talking about, you know, what we can kind of expect for these three guys. This isn't going to be a speculation video, but it's going to be a more of a hard reality video in a, in a lot of senses. As, uh, you know, True North has come out and they've said this is by no means a rebuild. Uh, we are still going to be competitive next season and yada 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 but I don't see how that is possible when you are getting rid of your number one and two centers and your all-world Vesna goaltender. I, I just don't see how it's possible because you're sitting there and you have to imagine that the best player in all three of these trades, assuming they're all separate, I'm sure they all will be, you know, in the Mark Shifley trade, who are the Jets going to trade for? Probably a bundle of things, right? It's probably a player, a pick, and a prospect. Same with Connor Hellebuck. Maybe you get a little bit more for Hellebuck. I'd imagine that he's a little bit more sought after than the other two at the moment. And then, of course, you got Pierre-Luc Dubois. The return is going to be diminished, obviously, because there's only six teams, reportedly, that he's willing to sign you know an eight-year deal with uh so depending on if those teams even want to sign him to an eight-year deal if they're even interested you know that'll kind of determine his market but i do think that there will be you know three four teams in there really trying to fight for Pierre-Luc Dubois i'm sure there will be a decent package headed Winnipeg's way but i don't think it's going to be more than a first a player like a roster player and maybe a prospect at that and that's at like the highest right i think it's going to look a lot like the Jacob Truba trade where they got a later first round pick 20th overall and Neil Pionk right i think it's going to be something along the lines of that so look we're not going to get elite centerman back we're not going to get you know real great nhl players because the teams that are going to be wanting to trade for mark shifley pierre luc dubois are teams that want to win now so obviously they're not going to be selling off their main roster and these you know players that they have you know maybe martin nikas is available i'm not sure like obviously i know he's been talked about for a little while now but i feel like every year you know he's one of those guys uh, that gets thrown up on the block he did have a very good season so his value is higher now last season he was being dangled for i believe it was like a second round pick or something unbelievably low for him i would have loved if the jets would have passed on that i made a video about it last year i'm pretty sure as well uh, uh, ideal trade targets for the Jets but you know uh, no, nobody made the move for him now he's you know probably gonna be a little bit more expensive but that's one of the players that I could see maybe going back to the Jets but he's probably the best roster player that I could see heading to Winnipeg in a trade and it would likely have to be for Mark Shifley right but I just don't see how you can convince yourself with the packages you get back from the Hellebuck trade, the Shifley trade, and the Pierre-Luc Dubois trade, with all those holes, that you're going to come out next season and compete for a Stanley Cup. Like they said, you know, they're going to try to do. They're going to be, you know, definitely not rebuilding. They're going to be competitive. How? How are you going to be competitive? It's just not going to happen. You know, it, it doesn't matter who you get back. If Martin Nietzsche is your first line center, fine. Well, who's who's backing it up here? Is it Vlad Nemestikov, right? Like, is Vlad even going to resign here? I don't know, right? Is Blake Wheeler still going to be here? That's another guy. But he, I just imagine that he either stays or gets bought out. I don't see the Jets buying him out, if anything, if they can't move him in the offseason. I think they might just keep him until the trade deadline. And, you know, when they're probably not in a position to make the playoffs, they'll probably, you know, try to find a suitor for him. But it's just... It's just frustrating at this point how blind we have to be here. You can call it whatever you want, but at the end of the day, the Jets are not going to be a very good team next season. Free agency is not, you know, where the Jets shine. They will have, you know, presumably a lot of cap space uh, come this offseason. But who wants to sign here, right? Like, come on, what are we doing here? We, the Jets are notorious for not signing anyone, you know, big in free agency really ever. I don't really see them, you know going out and signing anybody big this season maybe a third liner maybe you know maybe a middle six forward like they tried to add last year but it just didn't happen right 
It did not happen. Guys don't want to be here. Winnipeg, you have to pay a little bit of a luxury tax to those players in free agency to try to convince them. And even then, a lot of the times, it's not enough. I think the Jets would be smart to go out and really try to sign like a Jason Zucker to like maybe a one or two year deal. Maybe guys like Matthew Phillips from Calgary who never really got a shot in Calgary. Just, just some reclamation guys like Matthew Phillips to throw into the lineup, see if they stick. And if they don't, you know what? Whatever, doesn't doesn't matter, right? I think that this would be a great year to do it, but maybe you find a gem, maybe you find a stud that can play, you know, in the middle or the top six. And then, you know, if you get a guy like Jason Zucker and you're not competitive this season, you can flip him at the deadline. That's a guy that's going to bring you back, right? A second round pick, maybe a prospect in there as well. It's a pretty decent player. So I think that this would be a great year to do that. And I would, I don't know. I, I just don't see why you wouldn't kind of just look at what you've got right now and maybe head that direction because you're not going to be as competitive as you think next season without Connor Hellebuck. Who is the Jets' next goaltender, right? Like, what, what are we doing here? We don't even know who our goalie's going to be next season. Uh, Dave Riddick won't be here either. Uh, more than likely, I don't see the Jets resigning him. Uh, so right now, it's like Arvid Holm, right? And I know the Jets aren't going to rock with that, but like, are you going to sign Antti Ranta? Does he even want to be here? Probably not. He probably wants to go, you know, try to play for a contender somewhere. You know, he's up there in age. I just don't see a lot of guys that are going to want to come here with the big dismantling of the roster. I think guys that would like to come here are guys that are like Matthew Phillips that would get more playing time in the lineup and they would jump in, you know, maybe get some higher minutes than they've ever experienced in their NHL career, maybe boost their numbers. And then, you know, if they don't want to play in Winnipeg next season, Winnipeg can say, OK, well, thank you for your service. You've boosted your numbers. You're relatively young and trade them at the trade deadline. You can get a package back for them and you can kind of accelerate this process forward a little bit. Then you know what? You can acquire picks. You can acquire better players. You've got all these prospects growing like Brad Lambert, Danny Julkin, Rucker McGrory. You got all these guys coming up in a couple of years. Now would be the best time ever to, you know, just kind of lay the foundation a bit. Just kind of stock up and get going on it. Because at the end of the day, you're not going to be competitive and that's just the bottom line. So time to look in the mirror a little bit, face some hard truths here, and uh, let's get it done. Let's move these guys, let's move on. This is gonna be a very good team in the next couple of years, I believe, if these prospects pan out, but uh, it's up to the Jets if they wanna accelerate this process or not. So, you know, that's just kind of where I'm at on the situation right now surrounding the Jets. I just wanted to put in my two cents because, you know, I've been kind of struggling to find, a, you know, an angle to make a video about this because I feel like I've talked about it for about a year straight now about all these players and, you know, the you know possibility of them not being here next season. Uh, but, you know, we're at the point we are. And uh, now this is the point where I would like to hear from you guys. So please leave down, you know, your opinions, thoughts, whatever about the Winnipeg Jets and, you know, the, the big three likely parting this offseason. I want to hear from you guys. I want to see your takes. There's a lot of people with different takes. So, you know, please be civil in the comments. Don't get into an argument, please. Um, but yeah, so that is where I'm going to leave it. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you guys in the next one where maybe, you know what? Maybe Pierre-Luc Dubois will be on another team. Maybe Connor Hellebuck. Maybe Mark Shifley, right? It's going to be a crazy offseason. So everybody get ready. Buckle up. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.